What's up guys? Today I want to walk you through the professional way to clean up audio recordings made on a phone. Now there are a lot of different reasons why you would have to do this from home studio work environments when you have just a phone to record yourself all the way up into the major feature film and music studio sides of things when you've either got distant locations being involved or you just have to do this out of necessity. So there are a lot of different techniques for this. There are a lot of limitations to this, but knowing how to do this is a professional way is going to really bolster the audio quality you're able to get out of simple phone recordings. Before we get started, if you find these videos helpful and you want to support my channel, head on over to alexnickerbacher.com. I've got donation links as well as a whole bunch of sound effects that I'm curating from my personal library for your royalty-free use. They've all been professionally recorded with top-of-the-line gear and they come tagged with metadata that you'd find in any of the major studio sound effects libraries. Or if you just want to donate, support the channel, it really helps me dedicate more time to making content, making these major studio workflows accessible to everybody. All right, so the first thing you need in order to actually clean up your phone recordings is of course a recording made on your phone. I'm just going to be capturing all of my dialogue here using the Voice Memos app on iOS and this is not anything special it's literally just recording my voice the exact same way it would if I were taking a video or hitting record on pretty much any other app. Obviously when you've got a professional microphone running through professional preamps into a professional recorder it's going to sound pretty good. The Neumann TLM 103 I'm using here is running into a sound device's mix pre 10 2. This is world-class preamps with a world-class microphone, and this is kind of what's used in a lot of voiceover studios and a lot of music studios to capture the voice really, really well. The iPhone is not exactly the most amazing voice recorder in the history of mankind, but it is actually pretty good at what it does. You get a full range frequency response. You get some pretty good sound out of it for what it is, so you can do more with it than you'd actually expect. Now, no matter why you're recording your voice on a phone, you're going to have the same goal that you would with any other type of spoken word, dialogue, or really other recording in general. That's to get it to sound the best so that people can listen to it for the longest amount of time without getting tired of it, fatigued by it, or irritated by it. Now the three things that I'm noticing between my TLM 103 recording and my iPhone recording is that the iPhone recording has a lot more background noise, it's a lot more reverberant because it's picking up a lot more of the reflections in this room here, and obviously they don't sound the same, they have a different frequency response. This is picking up my voice in a very different way than a professional microphone is. So I can solve all those three problems to a degree and get this sounding much closer to this, but as always the source quality rule here applies. If you start with something that's not great, you're only going to be able to do so much with it, whereas if you start with something that's really good, you can do that much more. Now the order I'm going to process all this in is intended to do the least amount of work per plugin that I'm going to use. So with that in mind, I'm going to do de-reverbing first, because as soon as I clean up that reverb to the extent that I can, the rest of my processing is going to do that much less work, because there's just less frequency information at that point. The de-reverbing module that I use is part of Isotope RX-8 Advanced. Now RX-8 Advanced is kind of the industry standard dialogue editorial Swiss Army knife of problem solvers. Now RX-8 Advanced is pretty expensive. It's kind of targeted more at people who are doing this kind of stuff professionally every day but it makes it really, really easy to clean up audio like this if you know what you're doing. And Dialog D Reverb as a module is super easy to use. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna load this module up, I'm gonna dial in the reduction slider to the point that, you know, it's not gonna be doing too much, like I said, but it's getting this reverb out of my dialogue recording. I can set the sensitivity slider to be reasonably sensitive, so I'm separating as much reverb as I can from the clean dialogue recording that I wanna keep. Adjusting the algorithm you're using can get you higher quality in a lot of cases, but I find most of the time that the default setting is probably good enough for me, and I'm going to adjust my ambience preservation slider to be pretty high as well because I only want this module really touching the reverb. I don't want it to touch the background noise or cause any weird dropouts in signal. So leaving that set pretty high, running this process immediately cleans up the reverb a whole lot, and it's kind of magic, honestly, with how easy that was. Now again, I'm doing de-reverbing first because the rest of my step I don't want to process any of that reverb because then I'm just going to have to clean it up that much more at the end of things. That being said, if you don't have Isotope RX-8 Advanced, there are a few other tools that you can check out in the description below. Now, regardless of whether you're de-reverbing or not, the next step in the process is exactly the same, and that is to denoise the recording just enough that you're separating your background noise out and bringing your dialogue, your actual spoken word, forward and that you're not letting one distract from the other. Now, I'm going to show you this with Isotope's voice denoise mod. 
module, which is part of all of their RX suites, and you can get that in the entry level elements package all the way up through the advanced package. I'll put a couple of different options at different price points down in the description so you can check those out. They're all pretty good at what they do, so really any that fits the budget is going to work for you. Now, Isotope's voice denoise is just as simple as any of the others. All you really need to do is leave it in adaptive mode and dial in how much noise reduction you actually want and hit process. And that's kind of it. This is one of those plugins that's really good automatically right out of the box. And now that I've got a much cleaner sounding recording, I can EQ this to make it sound that much better, get any frequencies that I don't like out and sweeten or accentuate any frequencies that I want to kind of bolster and make a little bit more prevalent. Now your EQ is gonna be a little bit different depending on what you're doing. If all you've got is a standalone voice recording out of your phone, then maybe you're gonna process it a little bit differently than if you were to say, need to match it into another voice recording from another microphone or another device. I'm going to try and get this recording matching as close as I can to the one from my TLM 103. And if I AB back and forth here, obviously the phone again is not nearly as high quality as the actual microphone is, but it's a pretty good starting point that I can do at least a little bit with. So I'm going to break out my EQ. I always use FabFilters Pro Q. Again, this kind of stuff works with any EQ that you can get. So just because you're not using FabFilter Pro Q doesn't mean you can't do this. You can do it with any EQ you like. So I'm going to first try and roll off any frequencies that I don't need, just like any of my other dialogue processing. I'm going to sweeten any of the frequencies that I like, and I'm going to try and mitigate or remove or notch out any frequencies that I think are a little bit annoying so that I can shape this sound to a little bit closer to the TLM. Now that I've done that, hopefully a being back and forth here is a little bit closer. Again, it's not perfect and it never will be because you can't get that out of a phone recording versus a real dedicated microphone. But by using a professional approach to process my phone recording, I'm gonna be able to get a lot better sound quality than I would just straight out of the phone. So I hope the info is helpful. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, so come follow me over there. And as always, thanks for watching.